G'day world, Maka Ridden coming to you live from Myriad 2018. Um, this is proudly brought to you by Australian Landing Pads, our content partner for Myriad. And we're here with Jeff, G'day. founder of Excello. Yes. How are you doing? Doing well, thank you. Yeah. How's your day going at Myriad so far? Yeah, it's been a whirlwind. Uh, pretty active conference, a lot going on. Yeah, yeah, I bet. Um, so your company, tell us a little bit more about that. So Excello is a platform for service businesses and teams to run all their client service operations. So think of it as you know a combination of project delivery, quotes, estimates, timesheets, utilization, productivity. By putting it all in one place, we're able to streamline the way the business is run, reduce a lot of friction, and double their profitability. Great stuff. And, and you are a global company, and you were talking off camera before about having offices in San Fran. In yeah, so we've got three main offices around the world. Our founding team uh, is mostly based out of Wollongong, which is where we do all of our engineering. And then I'm based out of San Francisco, where we have a team, and we also have a new office in Denver. So we've got about 90 people around the world today. Amazing stuff, a lot of people to manage. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people to manage. Luckily, we've got some software for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so take us back a bit and tell us a little about your story. I heard you're a founder of Australian Founders, was it? Is that what it's yeah, called? Yeah, yeah. So I got together in San Francisco a couple of years ago with some friends who were also founders, uh, and we realized there was an opportunity and a need to try and help other people who are coming through to make you know different mistakes than what we made. We wanted to help. We wanted to pay it forward. So rather than just doing it completely informally and responding to LinkedIn messages and maybe meeting up for coffees, we set up a, a non-profit called the Aussie Founders Network. Uh, it now has about 600 founders around the world and about 700 other people who are part of the community. Um, and we, we run regular events. Uh, we have an online presence that we really try and help uh, the next generation of Aussie founders to have a, a better success, better odds of success in what is a, a pretty uh, important but difficult uh, pursuit. And, and how did you go about creating that community? Like how fast, how fast did that all come about? Oh, we're not even two years old yet. So not even two years, and you yeah. already have over 600 you yeah. know, Australian founders all working together. Yeah, yeah. Amazing yeah. stuff. So you know, tell us a little bit about the process. Of, you know, of building that large network so quickly. I mean, a lot of it comes down to the fact that there's um, a lot of people who want and need help. And it's also great to be able to put together um, a group of people who want to help them. So you really end up with this kind of accidental product market fit. Uh, we center it predominantly around events. So we do regular lunches, regular happy hours. When we do our happy hours, we actually do like a fireside chat format with some really good content, interview someone who's got some really great deep lessons to share. Uh, and then that becomes a big part of the, the benefits that folks get. Awesome, and could you share with us some of the deep lessons that you've had on your journey? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh, one of the key ones uh, for people who are watching this who are thinking about maybe taking their business internationally is it's not easy, but it's probably not as hard as you think uh, for a couple of reasons. One, you know, Aussie founders are often pretty damn good. Um, it's a pretty good education system here on a global kind of comparative basis. We tend to have a good attitude of not doing what, you know, has always been the way that things are done. We, we like to sort of stick it to the man a bit. And, and that is a, you know, there are a couple of good cultural ingredients of being a founder there. Uh, and then if you've been able to build an initial success here in Australia, uh, you're actually pretty well placed to compete internationally on the basis that Australia is actually a really freaking hard place to start a company. Uh, not the least of which is because the people that you're competing with in the early stages are also really smart people who've chosen to live in a really beautiful place. And they might well be able to compete internationally, but they've chosen to stay put. So you have a, like, a real kind of knife fight situation. Uh, early days of founders trying to scratch out a living while most of the economic value in the country is tied up by oligopolies who are pretty lazy and, and don't compete on the world stage. So if you can kind of survive that, a bit like our, our wildlife that gets pretty, pretty uh, you know, uh, devastating because of being in a barren, tough environment, if you can, you know, as a founder, there's similarities to that. And once you get offshore, it's hard. Uh, it's definitely not easy, but you're, you're probably better than you think you are. And uh, yeah, you can take on international markets sometimes and do a lot more damage in a good way than you can possibly do in a small, highly competitive, oligopoly filled market here. Fascinating stuff. And you know, you, you're working on Excello now, and you know, you're, you're global, you've got 90 staff across the world. You know, what, what, what some of the challenges are you, are you facing there and, and any cool projects you're working on? Oh, it's the usual challenges, you know, it's um, maintaining an incredible, amazing culture, uh, which we, we have and, and maintaining that as we grow is something that we put a lot of thought and energy into. Uh, and then there's also the fact that just dealing with accelerating growth, 
Uh, I'm here in Brisbane today speaking at Myriad on two panels and and you know our head of marketing today is in Las Vegas um, speaking at conferences as well. Uh, we have a, a fast growing team uh, in engineering so there's a lot of product that they've got to get their head around. We have a, a pretty demanding uh, and diverse product and then of course when it comes to support and, and you know, sales and client success uh, you know there's as we grow faster, we're working more and more with really great mainstream businesses and, and their needs are quite different to maybe the folks that we work with at the very beginning who are early, early adopter, very tech savvy, different levels of demands and requirements. So just constantly changing and, and being okay with that is probably the, the, the ongoing challenge. Yeah, so lots of innovating, you know, keeping up with everyone, because technology is growing really fast, right? And, yeah, and, and, yeah. And it's a, it's a tidal wave at the moment. It is. it is. It um, is. Although, funnily enough, it doesn't change as quick as you think it does. Okay. So everyone's mentally skipping ahead into all sorts of fields around, you know, blockchains and autonomous vehicles. Um, but the actual like mainstream impact of that stuff is is probably going to be felt a decade from now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it, there is a, an amazing lag on that on that you know sort yeah, of yeah. hype cycle. Yeah, there's a lot of hype, but the demand still and the mainstream you know people taking it on is still got a, a few years ahead of it. Yeah, generally speaking, yeah. yeah. Awesome stuff. And you know, you're, is there any you're working closely with Oz Landing Pads at the moment? Yeah, we love to help out the what the work at Australia's doing with their landing pads. They bring out cohorts to San Francisco where we've got most of our events um, every quarter. And so we make sure we align those events and the, the mentoring and the networking type stuff to help um, those folks who are, who are really fresh and, and new to the scene to, to help them succeed where we can. Great stuff. And, you know, there's a lot of um, people around here, international people. You, did you come back on Myriad Air? I did, yeah. Yeah. So how was that experience? Did you manage to connect with any other people that you haven't sort of been networked with over in the States yet? Or? Yeah, a little bit. Um, I think it was more... From my perspective, I've got a you know I've been in the states since 2011, so I've got a pretty good network there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so for me, it was more an opportunity to, to help other folks who were earlier in their journey. So yeah. yeah, lots lots of advice, lots of questions, lots of lots of you know paying it forward, I guess, uh, yeah, yeah. on a, on an otherwise fairly kind of crazy once in a lifetime airplane ride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty crazy. Uh, lots of stories about that. So you're about to speak, or have you already spoken? Uh, speaking this afternoon. Speaking yeah. Some, so about what? Half hour or something. What do you? What do you? What's the key thing that you would like the audience to pick up from your talk? You know, what are you talking about? Yeah, I got like ten key lessons that have been really hard won from doing what we've done with Excello, uh, and so you know, I think the main lesson for folks is the first one that I'll share, which is, you know, you guys have probably got what it takes. There's nothing intrinsically special uh, either for or against you about being able to succeed on the world stage. Uh, you know, there's a huge amount of hard work and there's a lot of luck. But there's not like an intrinsic, you know, you can't do this because you happen to be from, you know, Townsville or Brisbane or Wollongong or, or Perth, you know. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the, the, market's, the, the market's out there and, and I think, you know, as an average, Aussies have got what it takes to win on the world stage. Not just in sporting or Hollywood stuff, but in stuff that's actually going to create prosperity for, for us and our children and our grandchildren's generations. Because the, the tech industry is where it's at when it comes to the creation of prosperity. And... Uh, we, can't, we definitely can't just be sitting back and waiting to buy stuff from, uh, from Silicon Valley. Yeah, yeah, and you know, start bringing it back home, creating some awesome stuff. Yeah, there's an opportunity for a lot of, you know, a lot of the best startups build and run their core engineering and product teams out of Australia and then go offshore for their sales and marketing. Because you can't beat time zones, so you've really got to be present in markets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the talent and the resources and the capabilities here when it comes to product are, are really, really good. So. I uh, highly recommend folks sort of follow that model. It's what we've done and it's absolutely been our X Factor. Awesome. Well, thanks, Jeff, for joining us. Yeah. And, you know, if you're watching and you're still at Myriad, um, he's, you're about to speak in 30 minutes. What stage? Yeah, yeah speaking on the doc stage at 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock. So go check out his uh, t is it top 10 tips. Yeah, or yeah. We'll do a lessons. bit of a top 10 thing, yeah. yeah. Awesome. And uh, make sure you keep watching for more awesome content coming to you live at Myriad 2018. Um, and thanks, Oz Landing Pads, uh, for, yeah, helping us out. Great. Awesome. Thank Thanks, Jeff. Cheers, Catch mate. you later. See, See you. Later. ya.